Hi, everybody. This is Shane from ShaneTheTutor.com, and I want to show you a simple little trick to raise your score at least 20 points. So watch me as I am on my phone. Oh, you know what? This is the trick. Take your phone. Get rid of it. I'll tell you why. So if we take a look at this paper that I have over here, we can see that it says how to prepare for the MCAT, six important tips, literally MCAT tips. So let's see what they're talking about. Let's go down to, let's talk about cars. So cars, as you can see here in my shared screen, is the lowest score that people get on average for the MCAT. Um, now, I'm going to read an excerpt here. So processing information while reading is a skill that can take years to develop. The best way to strengthen this skill is by simply reading as much as possible. So just try to do that. Try to read as much as possible. Doesn't matter what. I mean, there are certain things that are great. Like, for instance, while preparing for the MCAT, one should read a variety of forms of literature, including news articles, books, and novels with a wide range of topics in both fiction and nonfiction categories. Additionally, reading the occasional scientific journal article will help students learn to break down dense topics and learn new vocabulary. Now, here's the part of this, pass uh, this paper that I wanted to really discuss. Students from the current generation tend to favor digital media accessed from smartphones and tablets in the form of video or animation. That's fine. That's a-okay. This is often clouded by distracting notifications from friends, social media, and other apps, which impede their ability to process complex arguments and memory recall. We have a citation here that I'll show uh, a little bit later. Now check this out. Even the mere presence of a cell phone can negatively affect cognitive functioning during demanding tasks. As such, students should focus on strengthening their reading skills in an environment comparable to the testing condition. So even if you have a cell phone right next to you, right? your brain is being negatively affected. Your thinking is being negatively affected. And I know it's uh, pretty ubiquitous for people to have their phones. I, I think there's a, some stat, some statistic that stated something like the average person touches their phone like 300 times a day or something like that. Now, I personally don't ever touch my phone. Um, I don't have any notifications on. Um, I have a text app on my computer, social media on my computer that I can use to talk to people and all that good stuff from my computer. But from my computer, I can do everything else, right? So I don't need to use my phone. And that gives me a profound advantage when it comes to my ability to focus and do CARS passages, do MCAT passages uh, in a way that that is is a lot smoother than uh, if I was distracted by, by my phone. Now, that's something that's kind of overlooked. Uh, I haven't really seen anyone else, any other MCAT channel or any MCAT, you know, influencer or whatever talk about that. But I have the data right here. And here's another paper um, that states the mere presence of a cell phone may be distracting. Um, oh, I, I forgot to like open up this actual paper, but we can see from the abstract here that the mere presence of a cell phone may be sufficiently distracting to produce diminished attention and deficits in task performance, especially for tasks with greater attentional and cognitive demands. Um, the implications for such an unintended negative consequence may be 
quite wide ranging, for example, of productivity in school and the workplace. And I also have this paper, Smartphones and Cognition, a review of research exploring the links between mobile technology habits and cognitive functioning. And we see that they, in this study, they're reviewing three facets of cognition that are clearly implicated in public discourse regarding the impacts of mobile technology. So we have attention, memory, and delay of gratification. And that's something I've noticed. Um, you know that I am an MCAT tutor. I've tutored probably 300 students by this point. Um, uh, with the, the from the students that I've had, um, a small percent um, I noticed would be on their phones, like even during our sessions. And I noticed that that really negatively affected them because, for instance, if I was explaining something, um, you know, for instance, with one of my students who is on their phone, uh, the student kept saying that uh, we spent too long um too much time on a single question and that made the student kind of lose interest and believe that the longer we spent on the question it was what was making it more difficult but what made it difficult was just that this this student was on their phone and if you're on your phone your attention is greatly diminished. You're not going to be able to really pay attention. So that's why the, the extended time that we spent on that question made the student, basically her brain, uh, the student's brain just kind of like shut off. Um, memory as well. And the delay of gratification is also a big thing because I always try to teach my students to be able to think things through before you decide on choosing an answer. Um, but a lot of times these types of students will just kind of choose an answer and see if it's right. And that's because they have, they're they used to instant gratification and they can't wait and think and be okay with uncertainty, being okay with not knowing the answer right away. So there's many, 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 many things that can be said said about this, but I want this video to just be short. And also, mostly all of my videos are just like tutoring sessions, but um, I'm going to be making a lot more videos where I address you, you know, my viewers and my fans and everyone uh, directly like this. Um, so if there's any other kind of uh, topic or thing that you would like me to make a video on um, to discuss uh, anything like that. You know, I'm thinking of maybe like I should even add like a poll to like some of my videos to kind of get from you guys, my audience, like topics that you want me to kind of talk about. Like I can talk about anything really like uh, different, I guess, approaches. Um, different kind of strategies and along with, I guess, something like this video where it's just something that I haven't really seen anyone else really talk about, but something that I have noticed and something that I wanted to, you know, publicize and to, uh, you know, spread, spread this knowledge uh, around so you guys can use it. So basically keep your phone away from you. Um, don't just put it on D and D or whatever, right? Like, and in general, as just like a life improvement kind of hack, see if you can use your phone less. Um, just because it's it's good to have that kind of low. I don't want to say low information diet, but low kind of bandwidth that you're because because your phone is going to be connected to social media so it involves things with your friends involves you know looking at people's like perhaps instagram stories or tiktoks and kind of comparing it to yourself so there's a lot of like negative psychological effects that can come with the cell phone but when it comes down to it purely on a cognitive level um especially if you're studying for the mcat 
like you don't have the uh, luxury to have your brain work suboptimally. I want you all to be to have your brains work like the best that they can possibly work by maximizing like I mean, I, I'm not going to go into like supplements or micronutrients or exercise or sleep or, you know, all of these other kind of uh, soft skills or other facets that will play a role ultimately in your performance on this MCAT test. But I just wanted to uh, do somewhat of a PSA um, public service announcement to let you know, let you guys know that if you really, really want to improve your MCAT score, keep it, take that phone and just chuck it, you know, out of sight, out of mind and try it out. Just try it out. I'm sure that it's going to be better for you in a host of different ways, but certainly will be better for you for the MCAT. Hope you enjoyed this and stay tuned. And thank you for all of the followers that I have had so far.